Uh, we're going to move from, from health care to education. This country has an issue with not churning out enough mathematicians, engineers, scientists. There's some inter interesting ways to use technology to address that. To talk about that in a very inventive way, please welcome Frank Gallagher, the executive director of Cable in the Classroom. Mr. Gallagher, Hi. welcome. Thanks, Thanks for you. being here. Thank you. So, uh, so roller coasters, what, what's going on? So, uh, Cable in the Classroom is building a roller coaster game that will live on our website. Uh, kids love roller coasters, even uh, some of us middle-aged kids love roller coasters. And by embedding learning about science and math concepts into the context of roller coasters in the course of a game, we can lead to some really deep and rich learning as well as demonstrate to people who may not be familiar with it what kind of really fabulous things happen when you combine the power of broadband, great content, and curious kids. Because this, this game requires a broadband connection. You've got rich graphics. You've got a lot of motion going on. Exactly. Broadband does things like allow you to have not just text and images but full motion video, we can go out and get um, interviews with scientists who can talk about how what they do and these same concepts you're learning in roller coasters apply not just to coasters, but maybe to astrophysics and planetary sciences. Can we see it? We can. Um, let's go ahead and roll the tape, and we can talk about it as the screen Yeah, I'm, I'm dying to take a look. Yeah, I've, so I've... Cable in the Classroom is engaged in digital citizenship in educational programming and resources, as well as in exploring broadband for learning. So here, welcome to Bruno's World, Bruno's which World. is a virtual theme park in which this game takes place. Um, you meet Bruno and his daughter, Brunette, who are our guides. And by logging in, you have the chance to save your game, to share your game, to compare games with some of your friends and get a little competition going. Nice. So I'm in. We can start off by doing one of the design challenges, and that's the first place you run into some of these concepts. For instance, how do you overcome inertia just to get up the first hill and start your roller coaster? There are all sorts of choices that you have, and if you happen to pick the correct one, in this case, by having a pull chain pull you up the top of the hill, I see. does it work? We'll see. I have high faith. But you, you do a whole variety of different scientific concepts around Newton's laws of motion, potential and kinetic energy, velocity, and so on. Every answer you get back, you get a different tool you can add to building your own coaster. So let's do a little experiment and go to a level one design challenge. Here okay. you have a, a blueprint of your coaster, and you can just click and drag segments of a coaster onto the blueprint if you if you don't like what you're doing, you can undo okay. a section. You can redo, start at the very beginning, uh, and just put several uh, pieces of track together. And then you can use the tools that you've earned to either increase speed, overcome the inertia at the top, and see what happens. Um, if you look at the dials and gauges at the bottom right, you can see the potential and kinetic energy changing and the speed being tracked. So we kind of got the the basic concept now, kids, everybody kind of loves to personalize things. Okay. So we can right. customize our roller coaster carts. We can pick what kind of colors we want, what kind of designs we want to have on there. You can even uh, pick theme music to go along with the ride. So here's sort of the payoff. We can design a complete roller coaster in the free play area. Again, as we saw before, you have the blueprint. You can add sections of track. You have a, a whole lot of variety in the types of sections. Um, again, if you, if you make a mistake or you change your mind, you can undo or go back a little bit. You can keep scrolling the blueprint on so that you can make a longer and right. longer and longer coaster, however long you want to make it. Uh, I see we're, we're going to do a loop-de-loop -loop there. That always... Uh, scary. That, that was scary to me. And, We'll put in uh, probably something to break us at the end, nice. and that chain in the beginning to get us up top. And then again, as you see in the lower right-hand corner, there's a speedometer that tracks the speed and gives you your average speed, and you can see what happens to potential and kinetic energy as you go through this. You're building up your potential energy, and you start to use that and convert okay. it to kinetic energy. 
That's awesome. We go through, do we make it all the way through? Okay, we're successful, but here's the real payoff. Let's see what it looks like when we actually run it. Again, you see we've got our customized cars. We're yes. there in the context of Bruno's World, the theme park. We've made the climb, and now we start rolling. <laughs> Woohoo! Jerry Just Hart. barely make it around the loop. And we have a picture of ourselves screaming. We can save it, we can export it, we can share it with our friends. We have a teacher's guide to help teachers use this in effective ways that's linked to state standards in math and science. And as I said, we're able to interview scientists and engineers to talk about how what they do relates to the concepts and relates to roller coasters. So kids um, have role models of what scientists and engineers look like, what do they do. So thanks for visiting Bruno's World that and riding our coaster. Terrific, Frank. We're going to be launching um, that in a couple of weeks in mid-June at ciconline.org slash coastercrafter. How long has this project been sort of from conception to where we are today? How long have you been working on it? We are probably in month nine right okay. now. It takes a tremendous amount of planning to get the, the learning front and center. Every, you have a tendency to want to jump right to the glitz right. and the fun part. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. In this one, the learning is designed right in start to finish. How do you see the game being, being used? Is it, a, is it likely to be introduced to kids by teachers in the classroom setting, or what do you see happening? But we built this game and targeted it towards middle school kids and girls in particular. The data show that by the time kids are in eighth grade, half of them have just given up on the STEM skill, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. They don't think they're good at it. They don't see what relevance it has to their lives. They don't see themselves potentially having a career in it, particularly with girls. And that's really critical. If you look at the very cool products and services in Imagine Park, if you look all around the convention center here, these were all created by scientists, engineers, technology people, mathematics. Um, there's a, a critical shortage of graduates in these fields to fill the jobs that not only are available now, but will be in the future. So that's what we were targeting this for. And we think that um, basic middle school science and math teachers will be able to use this as a supplemental device to kind of put abstract concepts that kids are learning out of a textbook into a context that they really care about and can see how they're applied in real life. And then, of course, a kid can play it at his or her own leisure at home, right? It's, you can it's play it at home, platform. they can play it in a school, they can challenge mom and dad, so you can build the scariest, most fun coaster. It's uh, a really interesting progression for cable in the classroom, right? The, the heritage initially was in providing copyrighted video materials for use in the classroom. Right, we've been right? around, gosh, almost a quarter of a century now, originally to provide a free cable connection and, as you said, commercial free copyright cleared educational video programs. But like the, the rest of the cable industry we've involved, the connections have gotten faster and faster, the content has gone digital, much more interactive, taking advantage of the Web 2.0 capabilities that we have these days. It's not, uh, it's not your first foray into game making, is it, or, or broadband? Uh... This is our fourth module along okay. this. We have a game that lets you experience running for president of the United States. We have another one that explores the language of Shakespeare's plays and how that has evolved and changed over time. And a fourth one, um, sailing around the world and learning about weather. You believe broadband is, is a real instrument for education? Uh, broadband can be key for education. <clears throat> it allows you to, with the interactivity, with the video audio, to reach a whole different variety of learning styles. The kids who learn best by doing, by seeing, by hearing, all at once. Um, I know you know the answer to this question, so you can't answer it. Does anybody know the name of the roller coaster uh, located at King's Dominion in Virginia. It's a very, very famous roller coaster. Are you guys, what is that? Yes, sir. Rebel Yell. Rebel Yell, derived from the song by Billy Idol. Frank, it's a great, it shows great. I think you're gonna do uh, remarkable things and make an impact. Thanks for sharing it with us today. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate having you here. Frank Gallagher.